Assalamualaikum and good morning. So today we are going to learn about biodiversity. So in this world, we live with many organisms. In order to understand this organism, we need to classify them in a certain group so that we, we are able to study their similarities and their differences. So why do we need to classify this organism? giving COVID-19 as an example. So we know that this COVID-19 is a new virus that has never been discovered before. So once we found this new organism, we need to understand them in order to cure the patient. So how do we study this? So first we need to understand and classify this virus. So in which categories does it belong to? And therefore, we are able to at least understand their characteristic with the existing virus so that we can at least have an idea on how they act and how they invade our cells in order to cure the patients. So that's why we need to do classification process. So since there are many organisms, so we need a systematic study in order to classify them in several different groups usually based on their similar characteristics and their differences so the scientific of naming and classifying organism is known as taxonomy which is suggested by carolus linnaeus carolus linnaeus introduced linnean system of classification in this system, there are two important things that you need to understand. The first thing is the binomial nomenclature, the naming part. Each organism, we need to name them according to binomial nomenclature. And the second part is the classifications of this organism. So how do we categorize them? Okay, so number one, the binomial nomenclature. So each organism has two part name. For example, human, homo sapiens. Because in different countries, we use different terms in order to refer to humans or other organisms. So we need a standard version in order for scientists to know that all of them are referring to the same organisms. So each organism has two part name. First name represents the genus and second name represents its specific epithet. For example, Homo is the genus, Sapiens is the specific epithet. The specific epithet alone does not represent the species name. The species name is represented by both. So if you notice that the first letter of the genus must be right in capital letters and then the rest of the letters will be in small letters. So if you are writing, these two names must be underlined separately. Genus and specific epithet is underlined separately. But if you are typing it in a computer, so both names must be italicized in italic form. So that's the general rule of writing scientific names. Sometimes when we cannot recognize the specific epithet, we can only write the genus part. For example, homo in italic form and sp dot. But if you write, Homo must be underlined, whereas SP dot will not be underlined. And the second type is the classification, yeah? the hierarchical classification. According to the hierarchical classifications, so the domain is the highest taxon. So each taxonomic grouping is known as taxon. So basically, there are eight different taxa. Domain is as the highest. After that, you get kingdom. And below that, you have phylum, class, order, 
family, genus, and species, which is the smallest taxon. So you need to bear in mind that each formal taxon will start with capital letter. For example, Kingdom Animalia. So the A must be right in capital letter. You cannot change this kingdom into Kingdom Animal. So it's not correct. Okay? There are two types of classification system. The three domain system is the newest classification and the second type is five kingdom system. The three domain system is suggested by Carl Woos. The three domains are separated based on the differences in their molecular data. To be specific, in their smaller subunit of RNA. So based on this molecular data, all organisms are divided into three domains, which is domain bacteria, domain archaea, and domain eukarya. So domain bacteria and domain archaea is prokaryotic organisms. Whereas for domain eukarya, as a name, it represents the eukaryotic organisms. So all the domain bacteria is a prokaryotic organism which is unicellular and usually they live in diverse environments. Whereas domain archaea, they are unicellular prokaryotics, usually they live in very harsh environments. And for domain eukarya, all eukaryotic organisms is put under this domain. There is another way of classification which is known as five kingdom system. So five kingdom system is suggested by R.H. Whittaker, Robert Harding Whittaker. So according to this type of classification, first Whittaker used the criteria which is based on cell types or based on level of cell organization. So all organisms are divided into prokaryotics or eukaryotic organisms. If these organisms are prokaryotics, therefore they are put under Kingdom Monera. But there are lots of eukaryotic organisms. So they will be divided based on the second characteristics, which is level of organizations of organisms. So based on this characteristic, they are divided into either unicellular or multicellular. So if the organisms is unicellular eukaryotes, so they will be put under kingdom protista. And for the multicellular eukaryotics, so they will be further divided based on their modes of nutrition. How do they get their nutrition? Some organisms can produce their own food. For example, the plants. So, if they are able to synthesize their own organic compound, okay, they are known as autotrophic. So, this multicellular eukaryote is put under kingdom planting. And if they are not able to synthesize their own food, so they are known as heterotrophic. So, heterotrophic is further divided into different types. Okay, whether it is absorptive or the organisms are holozoic. If they are eukaryotics, multicellular organisms, and they are absorptive in terms of their modes of nutrition, so they will be put under kingdom fungi. If they are eukaryotics, multicellular, and they are holozoic, so we put them under kingdom animalia. This is according to the five kingdom system. When we divide organisms, it must be based on certain criteria. So these are the three important criteria that causes living organisms to be divided into the five kingdoms. So if you use the three domain system, kingdom monera does not longer exist. Kingdom monera is no longer exist because the kingdom Monera has been divided into two domains.
which is domain bacteria and domain archaea. But the other four kingdoms is still exist under domain eukarya. There are certain organisms that you cannot put them under this kingdom. Sebab kadang-kadang macam bila kita kemas barang-barang, ada je setengah benda yang kita tak boleh nak klasifikan masuk mana. Contoh ini nota, ini apa, ini apa kan. So, you tak tahu nak letak barang tu kat mana. So, kita akan ada satu tempat yang mana kita ha, campak aja semua kat situ kan. Ha, so, yang itu, ha, so macam tu jugalah dalam uh, living organism ni. Sebab ada ada contoh organism yang kita tak boleh nak masukkan dia. Walaupun dia multi selular eukaryotes, you tak boleh masukkan dia dalam kingdom fungi. Sebab tak kena kat situ. Kalau tak boleh masuk juga dalam kingdom plantae. Sebab dia tak ada cellulose cell wall contohnya. Dan you tak boleh nak letak dia under animal dia. Eh? Sebab dia tak ada ciri-ciri animal. So, this multi cellular eukaryotic organisms, bila you tak tahu nak letak kat mana tiga-tiga kingdom tu, kita campakkan dia dalam kingdom protista. So, jadilah protista tu, walaupun kita kata dia uh, mostly they are unicellular eukaryotes, tapi ada setengah multicellular eukaryotes yang kita masukkan juga dalam kingdom protista. Faham? Okey. Thank <laughs> you.